Imagine you're sitting there and within the next couple of days, your home is ready to go live on the open real estate market. Within 24 to 48 hours of it going live, the entire world is going to be aware of you coming onto the market and for sale. And it'll be the first time to make that best first impression since you first purchased it not so many years or however many years ago. Now you've taken every preparation in consideration. You've hired the top agent in the neighborhood. The entire home has been touched up and there is absolutely nothing a buyer could possibly find wrong with your home. You've had it professionally cleaned and organized to the point where you could eat off the floors and you're wondering why you never had it organized this great. On top of that, you've gone to get virtual tours to make buyers feel as if they already live in the home and video tours that give a story like no other and Ann Leibowitz did your photos and Chef Ramsey is doing your catering and you've got SEO dialed in on your social media ads like nobody's business with keywords tagging, retargeting, You've got the complete arsenal ready to go, but there might be one piece of the puzzle you might be missing. Well, before we jump into this intro, I'm curious to think what you might think it is. What do you think is the number one tool for getting your home sold in this market or any market for that matter? So on that note, we're gonna find out. What's up, what's up? I'm Eric Hoss, your real estate agent in sunny Southern California. Welcome to my channel. If you happen to be joining me for the first time, super stoked to have you here with me today. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and smash that subscription button. Also, hit that little bell because I'm dropping videos twice a week because I want to keep you completely dialed in on how this pandemic is not only impacting our local lives, our housing markets, but also tips, tricks, and strategies you can be implementing to stay successful as a buyer, seller, or investor in this market or any market for that matter. Now, without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Do you have the answer for me? What is that number one marketing tool that we all need to be implementing as a seller or homeowner who is looking to have success in this market or any market for that matter? It is price. Yes, price, my friends. It's everything in any type of market that we're experiencing. And I say that because I've been in the business for about 15 years now. I've had great success for my buyers, sellers, and investors as well. And I've seen every type of market it is. And the constant is if you price it right, whether it's a recession market, buyers, sellers, foreclosure, short sale market, you're not going to have a problem selling it. People are going to see the value. So let's get right on into it. Follow me over to the dry erase board because Here's exactly what happens when you price your home right from the beginning. Number one, you're gonna sell in the first two to three weeks. Yes, my friends, you will sell in the first two to three weeks. If you do not have offers in the first two to three weeks, you are overpriced. Perception is everything and that price sets it off from the get-go. You will have interest in the first two to three weeks because people are perceiving the value, especially in this market where supply is not picking up whatsoever with new supply. The homes are pretty much staying stagnant. It's really a frozen market. So if you were to pop on the market right now at a great price that everyone saw as a value, boy, you'd be hitting out of the park and selling in two to three weeks. And then you'd be jumping down to number two. You'd be selling in multiple offers because again, when you're perceived as a value, lots of buyers are gonna be interested and you're gonna get a lot of offers as well. The offers may be all over the place, but at the same time, those offers are gonna get that price to go up to exactly where you wanna be at the end of the day and achieve your goals. And then we're gonna get down to number three, achieving your goals. That's obviously selling over the asking price and getting your terms. And you can get that when you're leveraging these multiple offers against one another. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself sitting on the market for months with zero offers, no offers, or offers under the asking price, and you're gonna find yourself expired or canceled with no sold sign in front of your home, which is obviously, that's the direction you wanna head. That sold sign is exactly what you wanna have in front of your house at the end of the day. Some sellers just don't understand, some sellers just don't pay attention, and some sellers like to put full confidence in the agent that they choose, and sometimes, those agents are really focused on quantity versus the quality at hand of selling your home, which for most of us is probably the largest asset that any of us is gonna own, let alone you know sell in our lives at the same time. But Marvista in particular is actually seeing the highest number of smart sellers. I'm not saying that you know the sellers in Venice or Santa Monica or Brentwood aren't smart, but they're pricing it in a way where they're getting traction, they're getting offers, they're going over the asking price, and they're what? Closing at the end of the day, which is what we all wanna do. We don't wanna be sitting on the market. Who cares if days on market isn't counting against us? Buyers know what's new and what's not new on the market, and the market is getting stale with supply. So if you're thinking about it, price is everything for you in winning in this kind of market. Now, if you look at Venice right now, you're not seeing that happen right now. If you are a seller or homeowner in Venice, you are not seeing a lot of homes going over the asking price. Why? Because most of them are selling, are going on the market at over asking. That is rampant through Venice for sure 
with the trend of just canceling, reduce, relist is brand new, rampant trend, still prevalent to this day. Why? I don't know. The only other market that's really seeing any shot, you know, real signs of pricing strategy going in the right direction is Santa Monica. Again, not even close to where Mar Vista is. And if you look at what the numbers in black are, the black numbers are actually referring to the current market that we're facing right now from April to mid late May when we are right now. And these green numbers are actually the numbers for quarter one. So on that note, Marvis had 24 homes that sold over the asking price in quarter one. Additionally, five homes sold at asking price in quarter one. And then he had a total of 27 homes selling under asking. Now again, a huge number, but still compared to the number of homes that are selling at or above asking, it's still a great market that Marvis is experiencing. And just a lot of great smart pricing is going on in that particular neighborhood. Santa Monica again is right there. Venice and Brentwood, they'll be catching up. I'm sure they're still a very, you know, attractive, super attractive market, obviously. Just the circumstances right now that price is everything and especially in this market right now. So you're probably looking at me and going, what the heck is a pricing strategy in the first place, Eric? Well, there's three different ways to price your home. You can overprice it slightly above market value. You can price it at market value or number three, slightly below or however way you want to be under market value. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of the third one. But first of all, number one, overpricing doesn't do anyone any justice. You're going to fall right into being on the market for months, zero offers. If you get offers, they're going to be under the asking price because you're going to chase them down with price reductions, or you're going to be completely frustrated to the point you expire and cancel. That's not where you want to be. You want to find yourself obviously pricing in a smarter way, whether it be at market value, which I use and it is successful, but number three is the best strategy that you can possibly use. And you're probably going, what? Pricing slightly under market value is the best strategy you can possibly use right now? I get it, this market is tight, but I'm not looking to drop my price. I know the value. I totally understand that. I'm right there with you. If I had to sell my home as well, I want to get top dollar as well, get the most money possible. And to get the most money possible, gotta have the right pricing strategy. I'm probably going to be the only agent, so be ready to hear this. I'm going to be probably the only agent who's ever going to tell you that underpricing a home doesn't matter. It simply doesn't matter. Underpricing a home actually is going to probably benefit you more than anything else because everyone's going to perceive you as a value. And I want to give you a perfect example. I want to give you one that actually I wasn't the listing agent for. I had a buyer come, excuse me, a seller come in to an open house and they're like, Eric, you know, my house is a Mar Vista. I know you have seen you. You've come to my door, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with a different little strategy. I'm, I'm going to actually go under market value when pricing my home. And I said, well, tell me more. What that, what does that mean? Well, he told me about his house as a three bedroom, three bathroom, a little bit over 2000 square feet two stories, remodeled and updated, nice master suite, landscape was wonderful in the front and back. And he goes, what do you think I'm gonna list it at? Well, I said, you know, you know, to be smart, you know, one five sounds good, a million four ninety five, and you know, we can see it bump up. He's like, guess what? I'm like, what, tell me. I listed it for a million. And my jaw literally dropped, cause like where I was and where he listed at, at is vastly different, obviously. But at the end of the day, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna call you when we get under contract. And he did, and it was actually two to three weeks later. And he goes, guess what? And I'm like, what? Tell me, I know you got an offer. He's like, I got multiples. But he's like, guess where we ended up? And I said, well, tell me. He goes, 1.6 million, we're closing in three weeks. Underpricing brings everyone out of the woodworks. And whether that person is underpricing, you know, and, and you get bids that are lower, you don't have to accept those lower bids. You're getting to a point where obviously everyone is gonna perceive the value. It's just realistic and logical that it's gonna go up when everyone perceives that value. Now, it's the same way when you see an art auction, if anyone's in an art auction or a car auction for that matter, you see the car come up to the to the stage or the piece of art come up to the stage, for example, like a Banksy, you know, it's got its projected value of say like $500,000 and all of a sudden the auction's on. It's a one of one opportunity. The emotions are flaring. The excitement is raised. Everyone's talking and trying to jam out their bid. People are on the phones internationally calling in as well. And all of a sudden that bid from $500,000 expected sale price jumped to 1.6 million in a matter of seconds. Why? Because the value was there. The price was a perceived value to the point that it got so much emotion, so much excitement that someone desperately needed to have that piece, that art piece, that car, for instance, that house for 1.6 million, paying $600,000 more than what he put it on the market for. It's unbelievable. So when people tell you that, oh my gosh, you know, I'm gonna underprice it, that's just not the way to go. You're gonna be leaving money on the table. Well, to be honest, you overprice, that's where you actually leave money on the table. You're not gonna get anywhere near the price that you started with, 
nor the price you should have been at in the first place. Obviously, you don't want to be in that position. You don't want to leave any money on the table. You'd rather be in the position like the gentleman I just mentioned in my example who came out way ahead to the tune of $600,000 over his asking price. That's exactly the experience you want to have. No matter what market you're experiencing, it can still happen. Now, I'm ready to chat with you anytime. I'm here for you. Just leave a comment. All my contact information is in the description. So I'm here to have a chat with you anytime, especially if you're on the west side of LA. I'm happy to do a Zoom call, get you dialed in on how to be successful as a seller and a buyer during this pandemic market. But on that note, all I want for you guys is to see you winning. And honestly, there's nobody that does it better. Have a great one.